Cyclone Mel kicks off another active period in the tropics on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for November 14th. So we finally have a new storm to add to our long list of 76 so far this year and a few more could be on the horizon in various basins, most notably in the Atlantic. But of course we already have that developed storm Mal which is a threat to Fiji, we'll get onto that in a second. But in the Atlantic we've got that 60% chance that we've given right now, National Hurricane Center a little higher at 70% but I still have one or two reservations over this system (coughs) which is about to develop uh, in the southern Caribbean there on day 167 of hurricane season. In the Eastern Pacific, it's pretty dead now. There's not much going on there, no areas of interest. And could that be the end of the season? I think it may well be. Uh, We're very close to the end now. Of course, we are in November. In the Western Pacific, though, no signs of a halt yet, but still systems that are struggling to form, including what was called Tropical Depression 17W, although we haven't found any evidence that it was ever a tropical depression, still we're giving a decent chance of it becoming a tropical cyclone as it approaches the Philippines. Behind it, another area of interest could also form become a significant typhoon. In the North Indian Ocean, things are getting rather convoluted over there, but we're still giving a 40% chance of development that may be competing low pressure centers centers that may be uh, you know making it a difficult situation to forecast as that system moves northwards and in the southern hemisphere of course we've got cyclone mal which is headed towards fiji not too far uh, east of vanuatu currently moving southeast and that is a strong tropical storm not far from hurricane status Here's a closer look at it right now. It is currently 411 kilometers from Naviti Island, a cyclone warning in effect for Viti Levu, Yasara Group, and uh, Kadavu towards the south. It is 480 kilometers from Nadi, 584 from Suva, the capital, 629 from Kadavu, and 729 from Port Villa in Vanuatu there. At the moment though, it is still far out at sea, but it will be moving quite quickly, currently at a motion of 24 kilometers per hour, and it will reach the west coast of uh, near Nadi in the not too distant future in the next 36 hours. And here it is on satellite, and you can see Fiji just towards the southeast there. Uh, Some sort of an eye is starting to appear by the looks of things. It did at first look like it was looking a little bit disheveled, and still does actually on the infrared as we look at this here. Uh, But that uh, gap there towards the southeastern part of that convection is probably an open eye Uh, it certainly looked like that on the visible imagery so it is flirting with hurricane status as it moves southeastwards there with deep convection this is 17w and it's quite clear to see on this visible imagery that there is no center of circulation but there is convection blowing up towards the west northwest of its central area even though it's not got a center of circulation. So it's not far away from being designated as a legitimate tropical cyclone, uh, but I can tell you right now that it certainly is not, and that was supported by ASCAT earlier today. In the North Indian Ocean, we've already got the start of this new system that's moving through past the Andaman Islands and into the Bay of Bengal. It's a hot spot, so there is going to be a significant chance of development here and could become a significant tropical cyclone. What might stop it is other systems around it. And this is another invest, not far from Pompeii uh, in Micronesia. That's the one that we gave chances to earlier um, a few days ago, but it's died off. And one behind it is now becoming more favorable near the Marshall Islands. Hard to keep track of all of these things, uh, but that's the one we've given the 30% chance to. And a quick look there, extremely quick look at the Atlantic. Uh, Now look at the sea surface temperatures, very warm off the coast of Mexico still, 30 degrees plus, that still bears um, notice. In the Atlantic, it's the South Caribbean, which is obviously where that system is, that's the hot spot. Over 30 degrees Celsius still in a few spots, leading up to Jamaica and Haiti, and it certainly could be a big issue for those areas, at least with rainfall, if not also the wind as well, and warm sea surface temperatures continue beyond there. 
Western Pacific Philippine Sea remains very warm over large parts of it, especially further south, but along the east coast of the Philippine Islands also looking good over 30 degrees Celsius. And also into the South China Sea, still looking very good there as well in the southern half of that sub-basin, uh, but the Western Pacific is looking good. Bay of Bengal is much cooler further north near the coast of Bangladesh and West Bengal, but further south near where that invest currently is, temperatures are 30 degrees Celsius, but it has to get its skates on because it will start de uh, decreasing in those temperatures. Of Madagascar, still very warm, pushing close to 29 degrees Celsius in a lot of places now, and off the coast of Australia, temperatures building too, above 30 degrees Celsius, and the Gulf of Carpentaria really warming as well as the Coral Sea. Near Fiji, those temperatures around 28 degrees Celsius, they'll start to decrease and will fall below the 26 degree isotherm after the storm passes there. In the South China Sea, it's still very much above average, around 3 degrees above. In the Bay of Bengal, it's slightly above, around 1 degree above average, where that system is. Uh, where Mal is, temperatures are near average. The Eastern Pacific, of course, has that big El Nino event continuing. And in the Caribbean Sea, temperatures are running around 2 degrees above average, where that system will be tracking over the next few days. There is still ample oceanic heat content in the Caribbean Sea ahead of that tropical uh, disturbance. Uh, that leads once again up to Jamaica and uh, Haiti, so very good conditions there. The Eastern Pacific is really shriveling up in what's left of its oceanic heat content, and the Western Pacific is uh, decreasing as well actually, I've noticed, but still a few strong points there around the Philippines. So let's check the GFS computer model over the next five days. First of all, on this development in the Atlantic, and it's interesting to see that there's a secondary cyclone to the north there that forms near the Bahamas and then moves off towards the northeast. I expect it's not going to be warm core. We might have an issue if it is, uh, but mainly look at the southern system there through the Caribbean, which becomes a tropical storm by the looks of things. Very um, difficult at first, uh, very disjointed, but eventually looks like it briefly becomes a tropical storm through Haiti um, and then it moves off towards the northeast. If it does form it will be very short-lived I expect. Western Pacific looking out for this system 17W on the left hand side uh, becomes very broad and may reform as it reaches the Philippine Islands and moves through. Behind it that other system that's over the eastern Micronesian Islands and the Marshall Islands moving on towards the Marianas during the course of this week and eventually getting close to Guam where it could strike with tropical storm force winds but that threat's been there for quite a while from more than one storm. In the Bay of Bengal of course this system that's been forming there it is just off the coast of Odisha and then continuing northeastward surviving for quite a bit moving into Bangladesh and West Bengal India and then continuing northeastwards as a substantial tropical storm dies off very quickly after it makes that landfall there it is again tropical storm status if it gets that circulation there it is and that's probably mid-range tropical storm there so looking at mal in the southern hemisphere passing by very close to fiji possibly delivering 60 mile per hour winds there maybe but in general those winds will be not as strong and certainly well, I wouldn't say certainly yet, but it's looking probable that hurricane force winds will spare uh, Fiji, but the storm itself could reach hurricane force winds and get through the category one uh, threshold there before moving off towards the southeast, going over much colder waters, turning extra tropical and being shunted southeast by a front over New Zealand. Now, looking at rainfall expectations over the next seven days, looking at a few locations here around uh, East Asia. Uh, over the Philippines over the next seven days we could be seeing a very high amount of rainfall for some of those islands, particularly in northern Panay, but generally the northern Visayas and southern Luzon could be seeing very high amounts of rain, up to 32 inches in total in the next seven days. A secondary area not far from the Malay Peninsula could reach 30 inches and over India and that region where that invest could strike uh, that's 17 inches over there that's not far from, that's about 450 millimeters of rainfall there there, but in the Philippines 32 inches that's 800 millimeters of rain from potentially that uh, 17 W and what it may become later on because it looks like it stalls over the area so very high amounts of rain possible 
In the longer range, 17W gradually dissolves and the second system moving through there and becomes much stronger. Well, the GFS has been warning us about this big typhoon for weeks now. And there it is once again on the model run, but this time it moves northwards, helped to, in that decision by the remnants of 17W, which looks like it swirls around the Philippines for an extremely long amount of time as that typhoon moves off towards the northwest, possibly category three or four, and then swivels off towards the north. Now we're looking at the Bay of Bengal again because it's almost deja vu. We get another system, very similar to the first one, that becomes a tropical storm, uh, lasts a bit longer actually, moving more slowly and makes landfall over there in Myanmar, quite close to where Cyclone Mocha make, made landfall early on in the year. Well there it is again, reaching tropical storm strength, nowhere near as strong as Mocha, and then moves northeastwards um, and gets close to hurricane equivalent, but not quite. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products and much more as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. We also have our still waiting for Hone t-shirts which are becoming a household name. That's because the house had been built before Hone formed. In the Silly range then, the continuation of that typhoon moving off towards the north and it stalls for a bit, but meanwhile in the southern part of the South China Sea, a very low latitude storm looks like it forms there and then continues northeastwards, and maybe another one trying to form in the South China Sea there, and a big mess that occurs across that sub-basin, with very strong winds all across that region. What happens to that typhoon in that area in the meanwhile? Well, it doesn't move very much, it loses strength only quite slowly. I'm surprised by that because it's very late in the season, and I've be surprised if a storm did survive up there before turning post-tropical. Eventually it does and off it goes as a very powerful extra-tropical storm. My goodness the models were loaded tonight weren't they? You can check our discord server and chat about all of that. Discord.gg slash force13 for tropical and general weather chat with thousands of members from all around the world. Well, on this day it was a busy one in 2020. Uh, a season which never gave up in more ways than one. We of course had Tropical Storm Theta not far from the uh, Canary Islands and Madeira. Iota which was of course headed on towards the uh, Central American region and would become a very powerful hurricane. Vamco which had peaked as a major typhoon in the South China Sea uh, certainly an interesting one as well, pictured. And Tropical Storm Alicia had formed in the Southern Hemisphere, kicking off the Southwest Indian Ocean season. Wow, back to today. Well, in the Atlantic, our next name is still Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Ramon. And in the Central Pacific, we are indeed still waiting for Hone. And I can tell you for sure, it's not going to be our next storm. In the Western Pacific, our next name is still Jellowat, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Midhealy. We've had 76 storms so far this year, which means we're 16 away from the annual average. I think we'll get fairly close. Code blue still for all of these systems, actually. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next name is Jasper, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, now it's Nat. I should mention the Australian region, not the Southern Hemisphere as a whole. The next name is Jasper. That's all from tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow night.